Hey guys, I'm back with another vlog and today, oh my god, I spent the day running around doing errands, trying to get some things, some direct deposit accounts changed over from the original account to a new account. And guys, if you ever have any direct deposits and you need to change from one account to another, do yourself a huge, huge favor change them all before closing that other account. I know maybe not necessarily possible to do that, but if at all possible, make sure you do that because, oh, it's gonna make your life so much easier. Trying to change them after the fact is gonna be very hard. Also, another piece of advice I've figured out, whenever you set up those uh, direct deposit accounts, make sure you take a little bit of time and write down all of the information that you signed up for them with, like your email, your current phone number at that time, current address at that time, because you never know, you may need that stuff later when you go to change it and you have moved six times since then. You have a different address, you've changed phone numbers, you might even have a new email address. So you're gonna be sitting there trying to figure out how to get all of that stuff back and they're gonna to wanna to know all of this information from you in order to make sure that you can change your account. Now granted, they're trying their best to make sure your stuff stays secure and that you are you moving your stuff. And that is great. We want them to do things like that. But this is where your due diligence comes out. You've gotta remember all that stuff. And it's a good chance that 11 years later, you don't remember that. I know it is very, very possible for you to sit there and say, I didn't, um, crap, I don't remember that. So now you're going to spend time on the phone with the companies trying to show that you are you and that you can need to change this. And they're going to ask you this authentication and then you're going to say, huh. Well, what was that? I don't remember. So just do yourselves a huge favor. Write all that information down. File it away in a lockbox somewhere so that if you ever need to change, it's there and good to go. That way, you don't have to worry in the future. When you change it, you can just go pull that file out, pick it up, and you're good to go. Also, don't trust a computer with this one. I, I know, I had some of this on a computer. That was like five computers ago. So keep that in mind when you're doing this, that you may not even keep the computer. You may not have it around, and stuff gets lost so easily on computers anyway because there's so much stuff put on there. So just make sure you keep all that information, old-fashioned hard copies, throw it in a locked box, a vault, or a safe, or a, you know, a locked filing cabinet someplace so that you can it's not easily found by people or easily accessed but you know where it is and you can go back and get it later it will just save you a lot of problems like i spent all morning running around to find out i need this i need that oh god i don't know what that is i have no idea what that is call them up now how can they authenticate me so they can change and update the information so i can be authenticated See, it's a big catch-22. But after, you know, several hours, got it almost all done, and it'll be good to go. But at the same time, got to tell the bank that, hey, um, there's a couple of deposits coming that uh, can't get changed over to the new account until then they're just going to show up here. And the, fortunately, the banks are actually good about making sure that gets to you especially if you tell them and let them know. So if you do close the account, make sure to tell your bank that you've got these deposits coming and from who, and please make sure you route them to the right account instead of returning them. That will also be sa saving for you. And the banks are, at least the two banks that I've been dealing with, they don't have not had a problem. They're very happy to note it in the... Uh, in the account numbers and the logs so that they can, when that hits, the, autom the automatic machine is just kick it over to a system where it goes to for manual review. And then they can say, oh yeah, that's supposed to go there. They can pull up, oh, yep, definite note, this is supposed to go. 
So you, there is a saving grace there that the banks are pretty good about. But if you don't close the account until you've made sure all of your changeovers have hit your new account, that's much better if you can actually pull that off because it'll save both the bank problems and your you know, frustration and stress of, will it get there? But anyway, that was the bulk of my day was making sure that got done. The other thing I did today was I went and spent some time making up price labels for three eight thousand dollars worth of stuff that I picked up or that I'm going to pick up tomorrow to take to the Indiana State Fair and sell. Now I'm still working on that Indiana State Fair video and that'll be over on the main channel this Thursday so you definitely want to come see that and Thursday is the day that I set up there so Thursday's vlog should be some footage of me setting up my booth at the Indiana State Fair. That should be fun. Tr hoping to leave, you know, around 9 o'clock in the morning, nine between 9 and 10, get there between 12 and 1. That would be awesome. And then have all afternoon to set up. I don't think it should take that long as if I can get everything priced. I've got everything pretty well sorted out, but if I can get it all priced, I think that's going to make life very, very easy for getting set up. Usually that's my problem. I get everything set up and then I can't, oh, then, then comes time to price. And usually I never get that done, but this time I'm going to have all of that. It was 300 items when I got down. Well, 297. So you can call it 300 items to pick up price and put out. That's a lot of variety sitting there on the table for people, and it's everything from four bucks all the way up to $225. So there's some expensive, some mid grade. Most of it is in the up to 50 bucks range. Probably three fourths of it is in that range, and then there's a little above that. But most of it is in that up to $50 range. So I try to keep the prices, I try to keep my prices definitely in line with everybody else or a little bit lower. Generally, I'd go for a little bit lower than everybody else. A little less profit, never hurt anybody. In fact, it just helps the customer out a little bit. And guys, business tip number one, make your customer happy and they come back. And I have had customers that come to the state fair. I've been doing the state fair since 2000 and like seven, maybe eight at the furthest back is, or the new, yeah, between 2007, 2008, I've been doing the Indiana State Fair. And guys, I can tell you, I have customers that I will see this weekend that came that first weekend I was there buying from me. And they come back and they buy from me. They don't buy from the other guys that come and they buy from me. That is because of good customer service. Take care of your customers, give them the best deal that you can give them, and they'll take care of you. So that's the plan, and tomorrow we pick that stuff up, we price it, it'll be loaded in the truck, and then Wednesday gotta go get the trailer and load the racks and stuff so that we can actually go set up and do a good job. But that is that. We will see you tomorrow with another video. And then I hope to see you in person. Come come hang out. Come see me at the Indiana State Fair. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of this coming weekend. I'd love to see you there. And that's it. Please go on and subscribe to the channel. Like this video. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.